Well, good morning, uh, good morning, everyone. It's lovely to see you. The first, first one back in uh, in St. Mark. It doesn't feel like it's been a month, does it? Um, that we've been away, but there we go. It's um, it's lovely to see you all here. And uh, Ros, it's great to see you um, back. It's good to see you on Sunday. And um, yeah, it's just lovely to um, uh, just to see people, isn't it? So yeah. Um, well, um, I might as well I might as well begin with this uh, this actually that um, let's start with the notices. Why not? Um, and um, Clive has asked me to. Um, to announce the Christmas Day meal. So it says, if you're going to struggle to have a hot meal uh, Christmas lunch, if so, we can provide you with a tasty three-course lunch with all the trimmings. We'll even deliver it to your door. And that's what, that'll be obviously Christmas Day. And that's with um, Fridays, we've partnered up with Tendering uh, Council and other people. Um, and so you need to give them a ring. And there are some cards on the back. So if you or anyone that you know would be... Um, will be interested in that, then um, do pick up a card on the back table. Um, do have a little look at the Christmas card. Are there, are there super, super Christmas cards at the back? I think there are a few at the back. Aren't there? Yeah. There's a few at the back if you haven't got one already. Um, the uh, things happening this coming week, on, uh, on Sunday there's going to be a uh, Chris Stingle service. There are two actually, there's one here at two o'clock and then one down at St John's at four o'clock which should book in um, only so um, you can if you want to book ring up Anne-Marie at the church office um, and um, yeah do have a little look at the, the Christmas thing there's just one that um, I want to mention which is next week will be the Wednesday worshippers Christmas service um, so next week uh, Mark will be uh, coming up and because um, he normally does the Wednesday worshippers Christmas and uh, he'll be coming and um, uh, I, we have yet to work out all the details, but that will be next week. And then that will be the last Wednesday worshippers before Christmas. Because the following week is the 23rd, and there will be a children's uh, nativity service down at St John's. So, um, uh, yeah, that's next, uh, next week with the last Wednesday worshippers. That will be the Christmas service. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's what's going on. I think we're going to be doing some carol singing next week as well. Uh, round out here on Tuesday night and then down Legaton Driveway on the Wednesday. Um, and uh, so the good news is that we are allowed, singing is permitted outside. So that's something. And one of the, the ideas that um, we thought about maybe is uh, uh, when we've, um, you know, Mark suggested to me after the service, um, sometimes maybe we could pop out and have a little sing, um, maybe sing a song in the car park or something. Um, which would be permitted. So, you know, we're still not allowed to sing in the buildings, but singing outside is, is legal now. So um, that's something that we could, um, we could do, perhaps, perhaps when it's not so cold and rainy. Um, anyway. Well, we're going to, uh, we're going to start with, uh, with a hymn, and um, we're thinking this, uh, this week, we're looking at this week uh, about... One of the Christmas, the passages which is often read at Christmas time, which is Isaiah chapter 60, or, or, or a part of, uh, uh, part of that is often read at Christmas time. And I just had this idea of looking at some of the, the passages which we focus on just to think, actually, what does that really mean? Because we often read them, don't we, and think, but what does that really mean? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to be looking at Isaiah 60 today. And um, obviously that's all focused on, on Christ. And uh, so our first hymn is Christ is made the sure foundation. Um, the words will be uh, will all be on the on the screen. So um, that will come up in, a, in in just a second.
difficulty of lighting candles, honestly. <laughs> right. Well, let's, uh, let's pray. And um, it's great to remember, and just thinking about the, the Lord, the one in might and, and one in glory. And Christ has made a sure foundation, even at these times. Christ is still the sure foundation. So let's pray to him. And this is the, uh, in our service sheets. We'll pray together the prayer of preparation. And ask the God of the the sure foundation to be with us and to cleanse us and to help us. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, bless our Sovereign Lady, Queen Elizabeth, and all who are in authority under her, that they may order all things in wisdom and equity, righteousness and peace, to the honour and glory of your name, and the good of your Church and people. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We're going to have our our reading now, and uh, Jan's going to come and read for us uh, Isaiah chapter 60. For the nations or kingdom that will not serve you will perish. 
it will be utterly ruined. The glory of Lebanon will come to you, the juniper, the fir, and the cypress together to adorn my sanctuary, and I will glorify the place for my feet. The children of your oppressors will come bowing before you. All who despise you will bow down at your feet and will call you the city of the Lord, Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Although you've been forsaken and hated, with no one travelling through, I will make you the everlasting pride and the joy of all nations. You will drink the milk of nations and be nursed at royal breasts. Then you will know that I, the Lord, am your Saviour, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Instead of bronze, I will bring you gold, and silver in place of iron. Instead of wood, I will bring you bronze, and iron in place of stones. I will make peace with your governor, and well-being your ruler. No longer will violence be heard in your land, nor ruin or de destruction within your borders. But you will call your walls salvation, and your gates praise. The sun will no more be your light by day, nor will the brightness of the moon shine on you. For the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Your sun will never set again, and your moon will wane no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of sorrow will end. Then all your people will be righteous, and they will possess the land forever. They are the shoot I have planted, the work of my hands for the display of my splendour. The least of you will become a thousand, and the smallest a mighty nation. I am the Lord. In its time, I will do this swiftly. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks very much, Jan. It's a long passage, but worth it, I think. It's uh, Isaiah 60. It's, it's beautiful, Isaiah. And um, it will, we'll think about that in a, in a few moments' time. Um, but just before we do that, we'll say our uh, creed together. So why don't we stand and uh, we'll say the Nicene Creed. Uh, we'll stand as is traditional um, for the creed. And we'll say these words together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please do be seated. Well, do um, turn to that page in Isaiah, page 748 in the, uh, in the Church Bibles, 
if you'd like to, uh, to, to follow along, we're going to be looking at Isaiah chapter 60. I think there's a lot of, uh, a lot of darkness in, in the world at the moment. And I think a lot of people have been, been thinking that. Now, we've been thinking about all of the, obviously, all of the things going on with, with the virus, um, being able to, not being able to see people, not being able to, you know, um, do what we normally would do. Um, and it, I have to say, it looks like um, things are uh, possibly looking a bit brighter next year. But um, the, what was it? Jonathan Van Tam was saying that you know, masks will potentially be with us for another year or more, and so on. And it looks like um, you know that whatever whatever it's going to be, um, things will not be back to normal normal um, next year. People keep talking, they're using the phrase, I don't know if you've come across this, build back better. I don't know if that's the phrase that you've come across. Um, but that's the phrase which they often use, as in, you know, well, this situation, this is a time when we are, um, you know, bad things are happening, but we need to build back better. That's what we need to, that's what we need to focus on. And I think the question which I, which I think is, can we? Can we build back better? Is that, is that in our power to do? Is that something that we, uh, we need politicians to do? And this is where I think Isaiah is, and this passage in Isaiah, is actually really uh, helpful for us to be looking at at the moment. Because uh, I think a lot of people think about Christmas as being, well, it happened you know, back then and it was all... Lovely, there was a stable and there's a nativity scene and there's a baby. And, but the, those times, they were dark times in those days. And, and actually, that this, this passage speaks about the darkness and speaks about the light that happens, what God does. So we'll think about the darkness. It says, um, Isaiah 60 begins, Our eyes shine for your light has come. The glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the peoples. So darkness and thick darkness, that's over the earth. What does that mean? Let's think about the darkness to begin with. Well, darkness is is something that the Bible often uses as the image of what what the world is like at, at the moment. So let me just give you one example from John's Gospel. John chapter 3, verses 19 and 20 which says, uh, this is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. So sin and evil, that's, that's what darkness is, really. That's the, the world dwells in, in darkness. But you know the other interesting thing? Where it talks about thick darkness, that word is used elsewhere in the Bible. And it's used in, uh, for example, in Exodus chapter 20, verse 21, where it says, uh, The people remained at a distance while Moses approached the thick darkness where God was. Isn't that interesting? God came down at Sinai to give the Ten Commandments and it was in that, it's described as being in that thick darkness. Why is that? And the reason is, I think, because our sin keeps us from seeing God. That thick darkness is actually a barrier between us and God. That our sin is actually the the barrier that keeps us uh, from, from drawing near to God. And that it's it's not God who dwells in darkness as such, because God is light. It's us who dwell in darkness. And so we can't see God. If we were to see God, as, um, as God says uh, elsewhere in, in Exodus, then, then we would die. Because we are not, we don't have the, uh, the purity of heart. We couldn't stand it. So darkness uh, hides God from us, and that is, that is our sin. But there's also, more than that, there is a kind of, 
Isaiah is talking about specific events that happened. And um, what, what happened is sort of gives a few clues in this passage. He talks in verses 14 and 15 about um, oppressors. Uh, he talks about hatred, um, all who despise you uh, will bow down. And he talks about them being forsaken, verse 15. So uh, he talks about sort of uh, oppression. He talks in verses 18 um, about uh, violence and ruin and destruction. And then verse 10, he mentions about rebuilding the walls. So what he's talking about is sort of wartime. They have been oppressed. They've been hated. People have come in and destroyed the city walls. They had um, taken them. But above all of that, above all of that, what happened was it, it says in verse 10, in anger, I struck you. That stood behind all of the, the things that had happened. That God had been punishing them for their sin. And what had happened is exactly as God predicted. In, uh, in Deuteronomy, you can read in Deuteronomy 28, where God says, See, I set before you life and death, blessings and curses. If you obey me, these are the blessings that will happen. If you disobey me, these are the curses that will happen. And what happened is the people disobeyed God. They turned to other gods and they were taken away. They were overtaken. The southern kingdom got taken over by Assyria and were exiled. Um, and then the, the northern kingdom took another couple of hundred years. Isaiah was writing about when the southern kingdom were about to be taken by Assyria. But Babylon came and took the northern kingdom. Uh, away, and, uh, and that happened in about 586 BC. So Isaiah is looking to that time when the, the people would be taken over by the superpowers of the day. And he said it's a punishment from God for turning away. That's, that's why it's sin. He's talking about sin. So that's the darkness. The, the light, he spends a lot more time talking about the light. And uh, the whole thing is actually darkness giving way to light. Uh, it says, verse 2, See, darkness covers the earth, but the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. So it's the darkness giving way to light. That's what is happening in this passage. The darkness is giving way to light. What does that look like? Again, we'll just briefly go through that. The people are returning it says, verse 4, your sons come from afar, your daughters are carried uh, on the hip. So the, the, the exiles are returning. The exiles are returning to, uh, to Jerusalem, to the nation. Um, verses 5 and 6, wealth and riches are brought in. Um, the wealth on the seas will be brought to you. The riches of the nations will come. Um, interestingly, it says, um, all from Sheba will come, bearing gold and incense. Proclaiming the, the praise of the Lord. That's interesting, isn't it? Like the wise men. Gold and incense. I often think, actually, that the, the gold and incense, we often think about them as re representing gold for the king and incense for the, um, you know, the deity night, sort of the we three kings of Orientar. But actually, I, I think we overlook the fact that this is a prediction from Isaiah. It's the, the nations bringing their wealth to worship Jesus. Bringing their wealth in. And uh, I think that's, uh, yeah, I, I've not, not really seen that before today. There we go. Um, they would honour the Lord as well, verse 9. Uh, verse 9, they would, uh, so, so the honour of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. And uh, even that there will be judgment on the other nations, verses 10 uh, to 14. Uh, foreigners will rebuild your walls. And uh, it says, the nations or kingdoms that will not serve you will perish. And verses 15 to 18, everything would prosper. I will make you the everlasting pride and joy of all generations. You will drink the milk of nations. And even it's turning bronze into iron, wood into, uh, wood into bronze, iron, um, iron in place of stones and so on. So it's, it's making everything better and more prosperous. That's what God says uh, would happen. Now the question is, how? How is this going to happen? How is the darkness of sin, the darkness of exile, going to be turned into light? All of these wonderful things which are promised, how is that going to happen? And he says in verses 19 and 20, 
The Lord will be your everlasting light. Your God will be your glory. So he says God himself would provide the light. God himself would provide the light. And it says then, verse 21, then all your people will be righteous and they will possess the land forever. No more sin. Your people will be righteous. The darkness will be gone. There will be no more need for punishment. There will be no more sin. That's how it's going to happen. It's a sinful people being made righteous and then inheriting the blessing that comes from being made righteous. Well, as we come to, as we come to a, a, an end of this, how, how should we um, put this together? How do we, what can we take into this coming, coming week? What can we remember this Christmas time? It's important to, to understand, and I know that we've already uh, really seen this, but th- this is something that is fulfilled in Jesus. This is what Jesus said in, uh, in John chapter 8, verse 12. He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. That's why we look at these passages at Christmas time. When Jesus came into the world, he says, I am the light. Anyone who follows me will walk in that light, not in darkness. And Jesus came so that we might have the righteousness uh, that we couldn't have otherwise. This is what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So we, in Christ, can become the righteousness of God. We can have what we, we can't have by nature. We can have that righteousness in Christ. So that means that sin doesn't separate us from God anymore. It means that there isn't a thick, dark cloud surrounding God anymore. Think about what happened when Jesus died. The temple curtain was torn in two. That's the kind of access that we now have to God in Jesus Christ. And we can seek blessing from God and expect blessing from God because we are righteous in Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful news? So there are just a couple of practical things I'd like to to leave you with. The first thing is, in times of darkness, then we need to look to Jesus. And it's really important because... It's so easy, I think, at the moment to look to all sorts of things. We look to politicians, we look to a vaccine, we look to, um, you know, all sorts of things. Those are all good. But at the end of the day, we look to Jesus as the one who can lighten our darkness. We need to look to him. And the second thing is, when we talk uh, to other people, I think we need to, to pray and seek for other people to come to know Jesus, the light of the world. Because that's the way that the light spreads. That's the way that that society changes. Is ultimately when people come to know Jesus uh, for themselves. And uh, and I think that, um, I mean, this is something I often say I know. And I'm sorry if you sort of um, get a bit bored of of, of me saying it. But honestly, it's, it's so important to be thinking for yourself. Who can I be praying for? Maybe have a list of two, three, four people. Um, who you are praying for to come to know the Lord Jesus. Because all of us in this room will know people who are only known to us. Now pray for them every day. Pray that God would open their eyes to Jesus, the light of the world. Pray that they would follow him and walk in light and not in darkness. And that's something that we can do to spread the light of the gospel, uh, especially at this, this Christmas time. Let's be praying for ourselves to know God's light. And let's pray for others to know God's light as well. Let's pray as we we close. Heavenly Father, we thank you that Jesus is the light of the world. And we thank you that although our sin separates us from you, we thank you that we can be righteous in Jesus Christ. And we pray that you would help us to remember that and to believe and trust in it more deeply this Christmas. 
And we pray that you would help other people, our friends, our family, our neighbours. Um, we pray that many people would come to know the light of Christ for themselves this year, especially in these dark days. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to continue in, uh, in prayer today. And um, I thought it'd be good to pray for the, the things coming up um, for Christmas. We'll pray for the events. We'll pray for the Christingham on Sunday. Um, we'll pray for um, uh, the, on the, the prayer sheet. We're praying for um, Translators of the Bible Society. If you were looking at the prayer diary, so let's pray for the Bible Society and for the work that they're doing translating. And let's, um, let's pray for the, those who are in need. Um, you know Pauline Cooper is, is not well um, at the moment, so we need to pray for, for Mike and Pauline. So, um, and we'll pray for, uh, pray for her and pray, pray for them. And so, Heavenly Father, we do um, just thank you, Lord, for for your light. And we thank you that your light shines even and especially in the darkness, in dark times. And we pray that you would help us to, to come to you and to, to seek you and remember you, uh, especially at these times. And we pray, Lord, for all of the events that are going on, um, uh, the events in our Christmas, um, Christmas services and Advent services, Lord, over the coming uh, few weeks. We pray especially for the Chris Tingle service this coming Sunday and pray that there will be a good number of people who come and that uh, the, the Chris Tingles would go uh, really well and that people would hear the message of Jesus through, uh, through that time. We pray for, for Mark, for Hannah, for all of those who are involved in, in running and preparing and just pray for your help and for your blessing uh, upon them. And uh, we just pray, Lord, that uh, this Christmas time, through the, um, the work that goes on through the, uh, the churches in Great Clacton, that uh, your gospel message, your light, would shine out and many people would see and believe. And we pray, Lord, that you would, um, as we look over, um, overseas, we do pray for the Bible Society. And we pray today particularly for the Bible Society in Egypt. Uh, and we thank you, Lord, for the work that they do in bringing your word to people who do not have access to, to Bibles. And uh, we thank you, Lord, for the translation. We thank you, Lord, for the, the distribution that goes on. And we do pray for your blessing upon them. And we pray that you would give them the, uh, the strength, the wisdom, the resources uh, that they need at this time. And we thank you, Lord, for... As we were um, asked to pray this morning, thank you, giving you thanks for those, um, about it, even about apostrophes and about the small details of language. We thank you, Lord, for the attention to detail uh, of people who translate and, uh, and study the Bible. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would give them real wisdom and insight into your word to be able to accurately get that into, into these other languages. And we do pray, Heavenly Father, for those who are in need. And uh, we do especially at this time remember Pauline and, uh, and Mike as well. Uh, as we know, Lord, that they are um, uh, usually here with us. We especially pray for Pauline. Uh, she's not well at the moment. And we pray, Lord, that you would bring your healing touch upon her. And we pray that you would be very near to them. We just thank you, Lord, for their faith, uh, for their trust in you. And we do pray that even at this time, that you would help them to, to grow in their faith and trust, knowing that you are God and you are very near to them and that you will bring uh, your comfort and your joy and peace. And let's uh, take a moment to pray either quietly or out loud for anyone else who needs our prayers today. Thank you. 
Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you do hear our prayers. We thank you for the privilege that we have of bringing our requests before you and trusting in you to answer our prayers, and knowing each of our situations and each of the, the people that we've named. We do commit them to you now and ourselves in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, if you would uh, take up your service sheets, we are... Uh, going to uh, say the confession and just in the middle pages. Uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, as we gather at the Lord's table, we must recall the promises and warnings given to us in the scriptures. Let us therefore examine ourselves and repent of our sins. Let us give thanks to God for his redemption of the world through his Son, Jesus Christ. And as we remember Christ's death for us, and receive this pledge of his love. Let us resolve to serve him in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. You then, who truly and earnestly repent of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from this day forward in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and amend our many sins and the wickedness we have committed time after time, by thought, word and deed, against your divine majesty. We have provoked your righteous anger and your indignation against us. We earnestly repent and are deeply sorry for these our wrongdoings. The memory of them weighs us down. The burden of them is too great for us to bear. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that from this time forward we may always serve and please you in newness of life to the honour and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We just prayed about the burden of our sin being too great for us to bear. But the good news is that there was one who did bear it, and he bore it to the cross, so that we might be forgiven. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins, to all those who with heartfelt repentance and true faith turn to him, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the words of comfort our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear what St Paul says. This saying is true and worthy of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear what St John says. 
If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Now there's a lovely image, I don't know if you've ever read the Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan, of um, the, the man who had a burden on his back and it was weighing him down. He could, he could barely move, all the weight of his sin. He came to Jesus and the burden dropped off and he went free. And I think that's such a lovely picture of what happens when we come to Jesus. That he takes our sin, our sinfulness, our shame and he forgives us and he gives us new life. And we come to him daily to receive um, the bread of heaven, don't we? We come to him to receive and he gives us that new life day by day, making us more like him. Isn't that wonderful? Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying... Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Let's pray together. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. He instituted, and in his Holy Gospel commanded us to continue, a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray, and grant that we, receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. And just to say that we will be taking uh, communion in the same way that we did before, which is just the bread at the moment. Although, just to, um, to say, Mark did say on, on Sunday that we are, for the Christmas uh, communion, we are going to be um, doing that in both kinds and finding a way of doing that um, safely and um, hopefully from the new year that will be the, the way that we do things so we will be able to take uh, the bread and the wine uh, safely from, from January um, and um, also just to say if um, I know that most of you um, did the hand sanitizer on, on your way in if you would like an extra little bit uh, now then just give, give me a wave yeah that's fine, and I'll, I'll come and do that beforehand.
the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you. Preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. And let's pray the prayer that the Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we'll pray together on the back page the prayer after communion. Lord and Heavenly Father, we offer you, through your dear Son, Jesus Christ, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Grant that by his merit and death, and through faith in his blood, we and all your church may receive forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present to you, O Lord, our souls, our souls and our bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and living sacrifice. Fill us all who share in this holy communion with your grace and heavenly blessing. Although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer you any sacrifice, yet we pray that you will accept this the duty and service that we owe. Do not weigh our merits, but pardon our offences. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, the, uh, the concluding hymn today is that Christ be our light. And I thought that was a really appropriate hymn to, to finish with. It's one that we don't often, I don't think it's in the book, so I don't think we have it very often, but I think it's a, a really nice one. It's forgotten your birthdays. Oh, I completely forgot about the birth. It's because I'm out of practice, you know, doing the, doing the, doing the Wednesdays. Is it Mary? Is that your birthday this week? I forgot. It's nine and Mary And... And oh, it was. Of course, it is. It's, yes, I forgot. It's all the Wednesday worshippers this week, isn't it? So, so here we've got Mary, Mary Bond, and we've got Roz. Um, uh, anyone? Any other birthdays this week? I don't think. Uh, but she, yes, Mary Moss. But she's not. Well, let's sing Happy Birthday. We'll not sing Happy Birthday, but let's clap Happy Birthday to uh, to Mary and Roz. Um, and yes, it's the, the final hymn, Christ Be Our Light. And I'll just put that on the screen for us.
Christ be our light. I think that's a good good thing to remember. Do you remember the um, the cards, uh, Christmas meal cards on the on the back, and the uh, Christmas cards on the uh, the back table there? Um, Phil, can I just say that those ones are just spare ones. If people want to do delivering, they're all at St John's with the roads. Right. The delivering ones are only at St John's. Okay, so no, can't pick them up today, but um, those are spare ones. All the roads are down there. Oh, Mark's just brought them up here. Okay, there we go. How efficient. <laughs> just finished with those, those first verses from Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.